Welcome to a special edition of Campus Cooking. Today, we're going to be cooking with produce from Vanier's garden. So I'm Sophie, and I'm a student here at Vanier in Environmental and Wildlife Management, and I'm a volunteer at the garden. And I'm Brandy. I am a teacher here also in the Department of Environmental and Wildlife Management, and I do a lot of garden-related work as well. So why should you get involved with the garden? Well, it's a great way to get your volunteer hours for STAR, for explorations, for your sustainability major, or just to put on your CV. And we'll give you an attestation at the end of every semester. We're especially looking for volunteers during the summer, and it's a great way to develop your people skills as well as your gardening skills. It's also a great fun time to spend outside with nature and make new friends. And so if you'd like to volunteer, the easiest thing to do is to contact the garden coordinator. Between now and June 11th, that would be Miriam Mansour, and after June 11th, the torch will be passed over to Rosemary Brodeur and Andrea Iftemi. You can also take part in the Adopt a Box project, which means that you would be responsible for your own little garden box, uh, and you would decide what you're going to plant. You'll take care of your plantlings uh, as they grow, and you will be able to harvest uh, your box when the produce is ready. Now let's get cooking. The first thing we're going to make today is going to be jasmine rice. We're choosing jasmine, but you can actually do the same thing with any kind of white rice. So lots of people have a very hard time making rice. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's probably related to quantities. And so therefore, a measuring cup is your friend in the kitchen. Ratio is always two to one with white rice. So we're gonna make a cup of rice. Pour this into just a basic, normal, average, ordinary pot. And then I'm going to need two cups of water for my one cup of rice. All right, two cups of water. So we just add the water onto the rice. You can add a little bit of salt as well, which I'm not going to do right now, but you can do that. And then you let the water boil. And as soon as the water is boiled, you turn the heat down to low, you cover your rice, and you let it sit on the burner for approximately 45 minutes. As tempting as it might be, do not uncover the rice once it's cooking. So the rice is done. Uh, we're just going to put it aside for now, and we are going to move on, and we are going to work on the tofu. OK, so now we're going to make some tofu to add some protein to our bowl. We're gonna start by actually turning on the wok and we're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil and we're gonna heat it to medium high heat, so about seven. And we're gonna let that go while we prepare the tofu. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna open the bag, obviously, and you wanna drain all the liquid out. So we're just gonna open it and put it in a, a colander and you can rinse it with some water just to get all the liquid off, the weird tofu liquid. Perfect, so you wanna make sure all the water gets out. And then we're gonna cut it into cubes. So you can cut, normally I just cut the whole block because you can save any that you're not gonna use in this bowl for later. Um, bigger cubes are nicer. Uh, but if you like smaller things, things that are more crunchy, you can do that as well. And we're going to want to make sure that the wok is actually hot enough. So we're going to use some water and we're going to see if it sizzles. Perfect, it's hot enough. So now we can start putting the tofu on. And this really isn't going to take very long. We just want all the outsides of each of the pieces to become nice and crispy. You want to keep on flipping them from time to time just to make sure that they don't stick. So if you're wondering um, what tofu is actually made out of, it's actually made from fermented soybeans, which is a great source of vegetarian protein. And if you're not a vegetarian, you can also um modify this recipe and use whatever protein of your choice. So chicken or... Yeah, or fish or <laughs> pork or... You can also add beans to it, chickpeas. Oh my God, they're nearly done. They smell nice. 
One of the great things about tofu is you don't actually have to worry about whether or not it's cooked enough because you can actually eat tofu raw. Really? Unlike chicken. Oh. Yeah. I never knew that. You can like, I, I often grate it and just put it on salads. You grate tofu? Yeah. <laughs> How? Doesn't it like... No, it just... It's, no? It, it just, it's like... Wow. Okay, so the tofu's done, so now we can season it. So we're gonna add it to a bowl. Don't forget to turn off your cooker. And now we're just gonna add some seasoning. My favorite things to add are garlic and onion powder. So what you can do is just add about like half a spoon of each and toss it around. Perfect. So next, all you have to do is toss the tofu around in the bowl until it's nice and evenly coated. Perfect, so now our tofu is ready. Now onto the sauce. Okay, so we've got a pretty simple recipe uh, to make some sauce, which is going to add to our bowl. The first thing that we need here is just some basic soy sauce. We are going to take one third of a cup of soy sauce. So I'm just gonna put it in. Okay. We've got one third of a cup here. And then the next thing that we need is two tablespoons of rice vinegar or white vinegar. We're going to use rice vinegar. Um, two tablespoons. One tablespoon. So we're going to pour one and two tablespoons. And then we need one to two teaspoons of hot sauce. Or you can also use chili flakes. We're going to use hot sauce. Please do keep in mind when you're making recipes the difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon. A tablespoon is about three times uh, a teaspoon. So you want to make sure when you are measuring things out that you are making the right measurements. So what we wanted here was two teaspoons. One to two, depending on how spicy you like your protein. We'll. Uh, We'll give it a little bit of a kick here by using two teaspoons. And then we also need two teaspoons of sugar. One. And two. This is going to offset some of that hot sauce. And then the last thing that we need is one tablespoon of oil. That could be sesame oil or peanut oil or even vegetable oil. We are going to use sesame oil, which I personally really like. It has a little bit more flavor than any of the other oils. So one tablespoon of this. It smells good too. And there you go, sauce is made. So we're just gonna take a, a regular spoon, stir it all around. You can use a whisk for this as well. This sauce, we are now going to use to massage our tail, and I will pass you back over to Sophie for the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna prepare the greens. Obviously, these aren't the greens from the garden since it's been snowing outside, but we actually picked some up from the supermarket, which represent what's gonna appear first in the garden. Um, so we're doing some kale, and we're gonna learn how to massage the sauce into the kale, but before we do that, we're gonna just have to clean it. So first things first, we want to remove the kale from the stalk and cut it into pretty small, like edible pieces. So I just like ripping it up into small, nice little pieces. And we just put it in some regular water with a colander so we can swish it around. It's really important um, to clean it, especially if you go pick it from the gardens, since there is going to be the little remaining dirt on all the leaves. And this is basically the way that you would clean any greens, from lettuce to chard to any other greens you can think of. Another trick that I've actually learned um, is you can actually add some baking soda. If you have a bit more time, leave it there for 15 minutes. And it helps remove all the pesticides that can be found on the leaves, uh, which is obviously not a problem if you're picking them up from the garden. So with the stalks, you can just throw them in the compost. We have one here at Vanya, right next to the garden, actually. Um, if you don't want to ha have one at home, you can bring them to school. Save the environment a little. So now we're just going to swirl the kale around in the water a little bit. Make sure all the dirt comes off. You can rub it with your hands. 
It's best to keep cold water because it keeps the green color. Okay, perfect. So now, after you think you've got all the dirt off your kale, you're just gonna pick up the colander and let all the water drain out. You can try shaking it to make it as dry as possible. It's okay if it's not 100% dry, but the drier the better. Yeah, perfect. So now with the dry kale, we're gonna put it in a nice other bowl and we're gonna massage it. If you're not familiar with this technique, it's, it's really fun and easy. So you're gonna get some of your sauce. You don't need to use all of it, but we're gonna basically massage it into the kale to make it more edible, because it can be kind of tough to eat. So I would put about half the amount of the sauce you made. And you can always add more if you find later. And you're literally just gonna get your hands dirty and massage it into the kale. This is really the only green you have to do this with. All other greens you can just put it on and they're easy to eat, but kale takes a bit more attention. Perfect, so now the kale is ready. So Sophie just showed you how to prepare the kale and I just wanted to let you know that kale is not the only green that can be used in this kind of a bowl. We have two other varieties right here. One is a red chard and uh, this is a regular chard. But you could use chard, you could use uh, spinach, you could basically use any dark green leafy vegetable that you'd like. Uh, as Sophie mentioned, you don't actually need to massage these in the same way that we did with the, with, the, uh, with the kale. However, you do need to wash them, right? So you've already seen how to do that. We won't go through the process again. But in the same way that the kale was washed, you could just open these up, put them in water, rinse them off, make sure there's no dirt left on the leaves. And then the easiest way to, to cook char is just simply to do it in the microwave. So you would put it into a microwavable safe bowl and uh, put it into the microwave one minute at a time until it becomes nice and soft and ready for use. Okay, so now we have all our ingredients. We have our rice, our tofu, our sauce, and our kale. So we're gonna start by putting the rice into the bowl. You wanna fill it about a third of the bowl, if you have a bowl this size. So now we're gonna add the tofu. Then add a few pieces, don't be shy. Perfect, so now we're just gonna add a little bit of the sauce to cover these, cause the kale's already covered. Just gonna drizzle it on. And lastly, we can add the kale. Perfect, then you can just mix it all together. Last, you can add some sesame seeds for a little extra oomph. So you can just sprinkle these on top and they add a little bit of flavor. Makes all the difference in the world. I like sesame seeds, so I'm gonna add <laughs> another one. Perfect, now it's time to eat. And uh, here we have it. And for the uh, final taste test. And also, just before I put this delicious bite into my mouth, I'd like to remind you again that the gardens are here at Vanier, that we're looking for volunteers for the summer and throughout the year as well. There are continuous workshops that are being offered throughout the semester. On April 25th, we have a workshop entitled Breaking the Rules Around Food, which will be between 12 and 1.30 in the amphitheater. If you'd like more information on that, you can contact Dana Bath. We've also got something called a place at the table, and these are soup kiosks that take place in Jake's Mall, uh, where you can come out and you can partake in free soup. If you'd like more information on that, you can get in touch with Kim Matthews. And then finally, we've got the possibility of summer jobs coming up. So we're right now just waiting to hear from Canada Summer Jobs for a grant that we've applied for, but the likelihood is that we will have two full-time positions for Vanier students to work in the gardens this summer. And if you require more information, 
get in touch with the coordinators whose names were mentioned before. Thank you.